WWM here, and I got a great video uh, talking about uh, tips for Kingdom vs. Kingdom. So, number 10, I'm going to start right now and talk about what I do at the start of uh, Kingdom vs. Kingdom. First thing I do is I get over there and I hit any soft target that I've already predetermined. I go to their, their hives. Anybody who uh, isn't paying attention, doesn't have their shield up, I try to get any of those soft targets. After I'm here, what I will do is I will go to their clan list and their kingdom, figure out the top targets, the ones that I want to hit, and I will make a list of 60, 70 people uh, trying to find targets in my kingdom. While you're in their kingdom, it's easy to find these targets. So what I do is I find people that are in my kingdom, I add them to contacts, and then you can just go to your contact list here, have an entire list, of, of all your contacts on here. Um, this is a, a great way so when you go back to your kingdom I will go through here and I will look at the people, figure out what their active time is, if they're very active within the last five minutes then I'll watch them and, and see if they're making any uh, attacks. This is a great way to find people when you go back to your kingdom all those active players that are getting all the points. Uh, I like to to hit them at the beginning uh, so they don't make any more points for their kingdom. A lot of their bigger players, uh, if you can knock out their army right off the bat, kind of takes the wind out of their sails. The other thing I take advantage of is the lag. A lot of people are on at the beginning of the kingdom versus kingdom because they all start at the same time. Uh, so I go in there, I take advantage of that lag. It's great for the attacker. Uh, you know, they, they get the, the blue circle of death all the time. Uh, it's uh, why I like to go out early. All right. Okay, number nine. I know this is going to seem really simple, uh, but this is a great strategy. I use my my uh, clanmates' battle log to figure out who I want to attack, uh, yeah, who's actively attacking. And when you do this, guys, click on the actual image and not the coordinates. The actual image will tell you where they are currently because they'll bounce around. So. You just go to to them here. These guys already put their shield up, uh, but simple but very effective of of killing some active users. So number eight is use your watchtower. I know this seems pretty simple, but after let's say you attack somebody out of the middle of nowhere, sit down, use your watchtower. You ported there, so you might as well just see who's active. Uh, but not only who's active and who isn't shielded, uh, which is great but also go and look and see who is mining. Because a lot of these guys will go out in the middle of nowhere, start mining um, these like threes and twos and one mines, thinking that you know they're gonna be safe. Um, but if you happen to be there, you know, take a look at all of them. So we got, we got somebody right here, for whatever reason, is mining in his own kingdom uh, for kingdom versus kingdom, which it, for me is, is like you you gave up completely you know so let's go pay him a visit real fast what I'm gonna do is just boost this down because he might be watching got him yeah He's just mining with ones, which is what he should be doing. But nobody should be mining during Kingdom versus Kingdom. All right, so I do that to all of them. You know, I, I some people will put their entire army in there to hide them. Um, so if I happen to be there, I ported there anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look and see who I. Number seven is have some of your clanmates come over to the other kingdom to create a uh, a mini hive. I like to have them do it near the pop. It creates, you know, uh, sometimes an irresistible uh, temptation for them to attack, which will show up on your battle log so you can see who's active. Um, these are great also for setting up traps. And what you do is you just have one or two players with permanent shields on. We're going to have shields on anyway. Uh, and then the other players just hide their troops in there and then just feed resources to them. Um, and then they give them back at the end of the uh, kingdom versus kingdom. Tip number six. 
always scout first. If there's somebody who you question at all, who's the same or about the same influence as you, or if you feel like there's a trap being set up, scout first. Um, I, I personally, I scout anybody above 50 million influence. And uh, beautiful thing about scouts is you could do it without them even knowing. Uh, it's a great way to get some points too. So uh, when in doubt, scout first, scout often. Um, and uh, the other nice thing is it kills their scouts so they can't be scouting you and, and finding those traps. So always scout. All right, so tip number five. When you attack, attack with lower tier troops with your higher tier troops. Technically, it makes your army weaker because you only have so many spots for your army. But when it comes to points, you're going to lose less. Uh, excuse me, you, well, one, you're going to lose less influence, but two, you are going to generate less points for your, for your kingdom, for their kingdom. So you can see here, uh, I lost 50, or, uh, 43 tier one troops. I only lost uh, 86 influence. So th their kingdom only made a few points where I got, you know, 23,000 influence from this guy so I created a lot of points for my kingdom so the difference between the two of these was huge so each one of my attacks I try to maximize the amount of points that I can get for my kingdom uh, this next one you know same thing here I only lost a few t3s uh, and you look at the ratio I lost you know 7.5 thousand uh, influence and they lost 1.5 million uh, and I only lost some t3s and they lost you know some T T fours. This guy was obviously a, a stronger opponent. Again, though, attacking with T threes with my T fours, I was able to, to minimize the amount of, of influence I lost and the amount of points that the opposing uh, uh, kingdom was entitled to. Here, I attacked with just T fours. I wasn't paying attention. Maybe I was just you know attacking multiple targets. I lost. I only lost fifty one. Uh, T4 troops, but it ended up being a, a, a lot, the, the ratio between these two, you know, was a, a lot tighter versus some of those other ones, which were complete blowouts. You know, I might even, um, not really, because they lost quite a few uh, T, T4s here as well, but it was, a, it was a closer margin. If I would have attacked with some T1s and T2s here, I could have saved my, my kingdom some points. So when you attack, attack with lower tier as well. So the next one is number four, and uh, I would have to say this is probably the most important one, and that is uh, getting your kingdom united as much as possible to, for kingdom versus kingdom. Um, we try to have peace uh, as much as we can in our kingdom. We start you know, using the line app, talking about our strategy. All the big clans will kick all the inactive players and burn them before the start of kingdom versus kingdom. You know, when when that starts, the other kingdom is going to come in and kill them anyway. So we might as well kick them, burn them, get the resources ourselves, and then we don't lose those points. Uh, we do that internally because we know who's who. Uh, if somebody's going to be active, but they're going to be on right before kingdom versus kingdom starts, um, that we try our darndest to to keep a, a peace with the idea that you know. Save our troops, go and attack when Kingdom vs. Kingdom starts. Uh, so we, we do that by sharing reputations with the top clans. We also uh, give back the silver that we get. Um, we have round tables where everybody talks about you know our alliances. And uh, if somebody gets hit on a tile, we pay them back. Stuff like that. Mistakes happen. So as much as possible, we try to keep peace within our kingdom. Tip number three. You have to score at least one point in order to get the, the reward. And, uh, you know, the, the reward got a lot better. We're, you know, at the end of this, not only are you going to get the, the Dragon Cradle, but you're going to get that seven-day boost. Uh, this is great, great reward. Uh, if you go down our clan list, we're doing a pretty good job. We're not quite to the end. Uh, we only have just a handful of people that are going to get this reward, but the mass majority of people are, are going to get this uh, reward. So at least get one point, you know, teleport over to the other kingdom, hit invader one time, and uh, you're set.
So I'm going to show uh, how I like to attack people. This is a recording that I took earlier of Kingdom vs. Kingdom. I was trying to get some good shots. This guy was uh, harassing one of our clanmates, and I picked him up with the, the clanmate uh, battle roster. And uh, he attacked, put up his shield like he's supposed to. He did great. But uh, for whatever reason, and I'm not quite sure, he drops his shield for a second, and uh, I smoke him. So go through some of this dialogue. I'm over in the other kingdom right now. I have a couple troops out. Uh, on a march so I'm gonna after I talk to my clanmate here I'm gonna speed him up get him back to my castle just in case this guy drops a shield and he does I still don't understand why he did this um, I, I guess he was just being overconfident and thought that he could uh, do another attack to somebody else when you come back to your kingdom you have to go back to your original spot which I do and then I'm able to use my my clan roster uh, the battle log really quickly to find him again there he is come over here now this is what I want to point out right here I do not port I never port right next to somebody they'll see you and they'll put up their shield immediately I always port out of their flame of reference and I I believe that there is a, a little bit of a lag with march lines. So it gives you that half a second more to, to hit somebody who is very nervous and is going to put up a, a shield in a moment's notice. So you'll see here that I I ported a good 10, probably, you know, 10 places away. And then what I do is, is I speed up. And this sole reason is why I use cavalry. I don't think that they're any better than any other troops. It's good to have a balance. Uh, I do this only because of their speed. And it's also why a lot of times when I'm attacking lower end guys like this, I I, uh, I don't send T5s either. I only I typically only do as high as T4 unless they're a really strong opponent. Uh, I'll use T5s, but for the most part, I just use T4s. I, I am not a big fan of the T5s on offense simply because they are... Uh, they're too slow. So I port away. I get this guy. I'm going to come down here and uh, just do T4s and T3s. And then I'm just going to boost this out as fast as I can, try to get him. And I do. So that's, uh, that's what I like to do. The other point I want to make with this of, you know, not going into the frame is I use this all the time for scouts. I never port next to the person when I'm going to scout. I port outside of the frame. I send in my scouts what they can't see at all, uh, and it allows me to get some more hits. Because if you port right next to somebody, they're going to see you, they're going to throw up that shield, and you're not going to be able to get your scouts in, and you're not going to be able to get your hit. The last point I want to make is, and I know this is going to sound like a poster, is uh, don't give up. Three days is a long time. It's a marathon when you're talking about this game. Uh, just because you're losing uh, doesn't mean you can't change the tides. We had a couple kingdom, kingdom 17. They had you know a five, six thousand, six billion deficit, and they were able to come back from that. Some of my biggest hits have come at the end of kingdom versus kingdom. People drop their guard. Uh, they feel like it's the end of it for whatever reason. They forget their shield. They drop them, and I get some really good hits at the end. So remember, keep your guard up the entire time. Three days is a long time. It's and thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I got some other great videos coming up. I'm going to do a video on best hits for Kingdom vs. Kingdom. So find me on the line app at uh, Army WWM2 and add me as a friend and uh, share your photos. I'm going to blot out the defender slash loser's name uh, so you don't have to worry about that. And I'm also going to blot out their clan because uh, they'll be able to. Sometimes you can figure out who they are just based off their clan and their influence. Send them to me. I'm going to make a nice video. Top 10 uh, hits for Kingdom vs. Kingdom. Should be really interesting to see. I already got some great pictures. Some really good hits out there, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video. Put some comments. Uh, if you feel like there's more tips, I know there's a lot out there. Uh, come to me. Uh, find me on the line app. Talk to me in-game. I'm easy to find. Thank you, guys.